Hey everybody, it's been a minute since we've done a little collection tour here. Some things have changed positions and all that fun jazz. Um, I was cleaning some of the cases and moving some stuff around and I was like, it has been a minute since we've done a little collection tour. So let's take a look. Um, in terms of Star Wars, I did part with some of my collection. I'm not, I, I just had to make that hard choice. Star Wars as a brand has been branching out so much with, you know, all the, the, the sub stories, you know what I mean, for Disney Plus. And I have nothing negative to say about the actual stories. I'm not somebody who has to put them in one category of, oh, they were the best or they were the worst. You know what I mean? I can just enjoy what I enjoy and not criminalize other people for enjoying what they enjoy or, you know different strokes for different folks right but anyways my point being it's becoming kind of like marvel where there's just so many characters and the more they what's the word like the more properties that they have under the star wars banner just like the more characters and all that stuff under the marvel banner you're just like okay this is getting to be a lot and i have to be a little bit more what's the word I have to be a little bit more conservative about like what I choose to collect so I was like well I grew up on the OG trilogy um, I was a 90s kid so I really grew up um, reading the Star Wars Insider and I got in a little bit before a little bit prior to the special editions so when the special editions were coming out I was like ready to go super excited so I'm just sticking with the OG trilogy here. And in my opinion, I consider Rogue One to be part of the OG trilogy. It is aesthetically closest to the OG trilogy. And I mean, it literally takes place right before and leading into um, episode four, right? So I consider that. So I do have some Rogue One merch here. Got my K2SO. Um, I really doubt they're going to make any more 1-6 scale Rogue One figures, which is an absolute travesty to me. Even with the success of the Andor series, like, I love <laughs> the Andor series. It's probably the best Star Wars, um, uh, series, uh, that I've watched so far in terms of drama, in terms of character development but i'm not gonna lie i really enjoyed the mandalorian as well we've got our return of the jedi scout trooper these guys are eventually gonna have a spot in the case but they're just chilling up here we've got our grail star wars figures uh my grail anyways in my opinion we've got our convention exclusive stormtrooper han solo he's chilling with the blaster rifle from the og sand trooper which should have come with this figure anyways, because that's kind of what Han Solo is armed with, right? When he's in the Death Star. Makes sense to me. But anyways, we've got Princess Leia. She's holding the Death Star card, the plans that comes with the R2-D2, the deluxe R2-D2. She's standing on the Death Star grate with the red top, which is an exclusive that comes with this figure the Luke Skywalker in Stormtrooper disguise. He also was a convention exclusive. He's using the Farm Boy Luke head sculpt, but they did add some perspiration, um, which is really just brilliant, in my opinion, to just add a little bit of pizzazz to a head sculpt that was already used. We've got Chewbacca back here, hanging out making sure, you know, he's, he's got the backs of everybody here. You don't want to mess with him and pull your arms off. He's chilling with the Death Star light up panel behind him that came with the Han Solo. But I was like, Chewie's pulling up the rear. Let's give him the Death Star panel. He's, he's a good sport. He didn't get his medal until much later in life, you know? <laughs> much much later but um he can at least have the death star panel let's give him that 
We've got old Ben Kenobi here, Sir Alec Guinness. We've got the Boba Fett, um, based on their appearance in Boba Fett anyways, the Tusken Raider. I would like to get some heavier garbs at some point, but it hasn't been a priority, so it's just chilling in here. Kind of got our little Tatooine scene with Farm Boy Luke. I decided to uh, base my museum pose here on the deleted scene just because it's not the best uh, likeness to Mark Hamill. So I was like, let's, let's do something about that. <laughs> Hot Toys has gotten better though. Um, we've got the Empire Strikes Back. Luke Skywalker uh, with the snow speeder, flight suit on. Got Lando Calrissian back there, chilling, doing his thing. Leia in the Bespin gown. Um, when I picked up Leia, she actually came with the Bespin City wall panel, but I was like, hey, we'll give it to Lando. All their tax dollars paid for that, so <laughs> well, we'll put it behind Lando. Beautiful figure, though. Great likeness to Carrie Fisher. I really, really love this figure. I mean, it was super light on accessories, but just, just a wonderful figure. Down here, we've kind of got a little mishmash of things. We've got our OG Sand Trooper. We've got a gonk droid. We've got these ridiculous new bases, which I don't like at all. Um, I think the circles just take up way too much space and they're way too high, especially if you're trying to put some of the newer releases with the older releases, because obviously the older releases have these smaller bases, which by the way, I'm using <laughs> the EG-6 uh, power droid or the gonk droid base for my Sand Trooper right now. Is that, is that right? Yeah, I, I think so. Anyways, uh, we've got Salacious Crumb there. He came with the C-3PO. We've got one Mandalorian figure back here. Um, I sold off all the rest of my Mandalorian figures. Kept her because her arm's broken and she does have a glue um, discoloration right there, but that's okay. I was really psyched for this figure to come out uh, in the 1-6 scale. I think the armor has a great mystique in the film, and I think the character design is awesome as well. So let's go up here, because we're going to keep the Star Wars while we can. All right, so we've got C-3PO on that, um, the base template that is based on Tatooine. We've got our Deluxe R2-D2, just chilling. And we've got our Jawa in front here, trying to make some deals. Uh, those desert templates that go over the display stand came with the Jawa and the uh, Gonk Power Droid 2 set, or yeah, the Duo. I've actually, so this is where the Sand Trooper base went, uh, the display base. I have my jaw standing on it. <laughs> Down here, we've got our scoundrel, the smuggler himself, Harrison Ford as Han Solo. A lot of people think that this figure's too tan. Um, I don't know if you, Harrison Ford was a carpenter, okay? Dude was tan. I understand the criticism though, that a lot of early Hot Toys figures were all basically the same complexion of the same color. Uh, in terms of like the skin tone, but like I really feel like this one is not too far off And I do think it is a pretty decent head sculpt in terms of the likeness of Harrison Ford Some people are just a little bit Anal in their their and they have a right to that. They have a right to their opinion In their collection. This is mine <laughs> So we got triple zero. I loved this character. I loved all the characters um I had someone get me into the newer Marvel Star Wars comics a while back, and I really took to the Darth Vader comics um, that took place between A New Hope and Return of the Jet. Uh, a New Hope and The Empire Strikes Back. 
that's where we basically meet Triple Zero, BT1, and um, Dr. Afra, which then spun off into her own Def Dr. Afra comic book series, I think. So hopefully it would be really cool to get a realistic uh, Hot Toys Dr. Afra at some point. We've got what has been hailed as the best um, attempt by Hot Toys to this point present of a 1-6 scale Darth Vader. Now the Return of the Dead, the <laughs> Return of the Jedi Darth Vader with the Sebastian Shaw head sculpt. I almost said Sebastian Stan, Stan Sebastian. <laughs> but the Sebastian Shaw head sculpt. Very realistic moving eyes on this. He looks so contemplative and it does make me realize that I am going to need another Vader at some point because this is my, you know, end of his arc, Darth Vader. And I kind of want uh, a Darth Vader from like A New Hope or probably the Rogue One Darth Vader because if you really analyze Rogue One, Darth Vader in Rogue One is basically a slasher. He's basically a slasher movie um, monster. You know what I mean? He's so violent and just... I don't even want to say aggressive. There's another word for it, but like dominant. Uh, towards the end of that film, you know, for the time that he is on screen. So I probably will try and pick up the Rogue One... Um, Darth Vader at some point. And that's it for the Star Wars collection. I have this freed up because there are Star Wars on pre-order right now. And then we'll move into my horror collection. Sadly, we've got the unfortunately out of scale Trick or Treat Studios Sam from the movie Trick or Treat. I do think that once uh, Billy the Puppet uh, from Saw comes out. I imagine that the scale probably won't be too off, off from this. So I'm hoping that they can display together. Otherwise, he's like completely out of scale with everything else. Like, he's supposed to be smaller than these children. Now this is 3-0, but like, Sam is definitely smaller than these kids. Even though I am aware that he is... While filming, he was seen, you know, he, he had various sizes, almost like Godzilla's various sizes, but like, come on, he should be smaller. Moving over here, we have our Stranger Things gang from 3-0. Love these figures. Super pumped for this as soon as they announced um, 11. I thought it was weird that they started with the Demigorgon, but I will, I get it now because he's like a centerpiece to these smaller figures, much like I imagine that Sheriff Hopper will be a centerpiece to these two figures. Um, I have Vecna ordered as well, and I am looking forward to see where 3-0 takes this line. We'll go back over here real quick. We are going back to Trick or Treat Studios. H4 Michael Myers, H5 Michael Myers. Um, I customized um, <laughs> their, uh, my God, what would you call it? They're basically their me mechanic coveralls. So they're a little dirtier. I did put a little stuffing inside them too because they were way too skinny for the people that were like playing the roles. And put some like distress marks on them. A little bit of blood on this Michael Myers. This one's a bit cleaner. I'm gonna start, uh, I think, incorporating some of my Steelbook collection into these things, uh, into some of these displays. This one's actually really cool. This isn't a Steelbook, obviously. This is a uh, old school, back in the DVD days. Um, it's a limited edition. <laughs> Limited edition collector tin for Halloween 5. I actually just ordered um, the tin for Halloween 4 because they did one for that too. So I'm gonna see if I can display them in here with these two figures to give them a little bit more presence. 
Speaking of presents, we got Dr. Samuel Loomis up in this, up in the business here. Another Trick or Treat Studios submission. The only thing I would say is that I think that the overcoat could have been a little bit darker. Um, and no, not because you can see through it, but like literally just in terms of like the color of the overcoat, I think it would be more screen accurate if it was a little bit darker. Um, the only other criticism I think is that the eyes could have a little bit more life to them. If you catch the light just right, he does look a little bit more alive, but I think that maybe some clear nail polish over the eyes would help that. Otherwise, I think it's a great likeness. Some people are like <laughs> a little ridiculous with what they expect sometimes, but um, we got our Michael Myers from Halloween 2, our Warlock. I customized uh, his outfit. I do want to put a different body on this one uh, at some point. This is a custom head sculpt right here. Literally custom casted, custom painted, custom hair. Beautiful head sculpt. We got our sideshow, Michael Myers. Um, yeah, sideshow Michael Myers ghost appearance, basically. Um, can I get your ghost, Bob? So this is actually the Trick or Treat Studios, Michael Myers body with these unacceptable boots that they put him in, basically like clown boots. So I figured, Let's display the sideshow Michael Myers with the Trick or Treat Studios head sculpt. And then we can hide the Trick or Treat Studio body with the, um, the, you know, the sheet. So we can have both of these figures here based on uh, the ways that we saw Michael Myers in the first film, 1978. This is a customized Trick or Treat Studios head sculpt, repainted and haired, rehaired. Love that one. Move over here to our clowns, the Hot Toys, Pennywise, the Dancing Clown. Would like to get a custom head sculpt at some point with real hair. That would be awesome. Well, not real hair, but like rehaired. I don't need real hair. I, I I don't need it. It can be. It can be. <laughs> it can be pretty much anything. I just. I don't know. We we don't have to go there. Sometimes, the idea of like putting actual human hair on a figure kind of. Might give me the creeps a little bit. We got the secondary head sculpt from that, Hot Toys figure, on the display base, Trick or Treat Studios, Art the Clown. Um, unfortunately, Trick or Treat Studios is known to give like little to no accessories. So I made this garbage bag and you have to buy your display bases separately. But this is their head sculpt. I just got it repainted. So it is a customized head sculpt. It is one of my favorite head sculpts in my collection. I will say that. We've got our high functioning cycle pass here. So we've got Patrick Bateman can never be too thin. We got the little dichotomy going on here. We got our business, we got our business side here, and we got our recreational side here. Uh, this hacksaw came with the sideshow leather face figure. Um, so I was like, this, this kind of makes sense to me because it's showing, you know, the disguise, the mask of a consummate professional here in Patrick Bateman, right? But really, on the inside, on the inside, yeah. And then we've got our Blitzway Hannibal Lecter. This is another custom piece. I actually bought it like this off of eBay, and does look like maybe he got into the strawberry preserves and got really hungry. <laughs> but yeah, he came customized like this. And I was like, yeah, that's, 
that's a one-of-a-kind piece right there so I'd, I'd love to put them in my collection for the last two years this spot has been open because I've been waiting for my other high-functioning psychopath Dexter Morgan to come in but I don't think that we're going to get that flashback figure before the next millennium so yeah uh, I guess I'll figure something else out I'm obviously a little peeved and so is a large uh, portion of the people who pre-ordered that figure like two years ago we've got Armando McReady here with the likeness of Kurt Russell. I think a lot of people are being a little... I understand for the price point, actually, but in terms of what we got, this is a really exceptional figure. I think that the hair is a little too shiny and the beard is a little too shiny, but besides that, like, some people are just going to such lengths to get, um, you know, the apparel that's 100%, I guess, screen accurate because this isn't good enough. And that's, well, that's within their, their right to do so. But I'm, I'm satisfied with this. Would I get the head sculpt repainted? Oh, hell yeah. I think that's as far as you really need to go if you really want a great, like, really excellent McReady in your collection. I've seen some people uh, have head sculpts of McReady where not only is the hair has been rehaired but the, the beard has been rehaired and <laughs> that is amazing that is amazing I do not have that kind of equity though so we got the thing uh, in multiple multiple different variations here based on how we see it in the film uh, these monsters came with the timed release of this figure This is just one solid sculpt. You can move like one or two of the legs a little bit. I do think that this could probably use a repaint as well. Like, come on now, come on now. We went through this. We've got this nice old school, the real Ghostbusters collection. We're moving out of the one six scale for a second. I'd love to have these figures in the one six scale though. Nice real clothes and all that good stuff. Hi, pipe. That would be awesome. Um, I'm constantly seeing, you know, the Ghostbusters from the films in the 80s with Dan Aykroyd and Bill Murray. Those, those figures are uh, coveted and they're getting remade again. I would just love somebody to take the time to like do this because I'd, I'd buy it. But I imagine me buying it is not enough to you know i guess justify somebody making them we'll go back to the one six scale for a bit got our two sideshow releases here of leatherface from the original film got our pretty woman head sculpt towards the end of the film we've got the killing mask basically the butcher um head sculpt there i really would if it was convenient, love to get one more of these figures so that I could display, well, one more of these figures, this one right here, so I could display the other head sculpt that's seen in the film, like the, the old woman head sculpt with the, um, put the apron on him, maybe get him like a little tray. I think there's room for three figures in here and I wouldn't mind doing that. Oh. I think this is Infinite Statue, right? These guys had some really great releases here from the classic uh, Universal Monsters, and they're really giving us some great figures from the black and white era. Um, we've got Bela Lugosi as Dracula. This is my first figure from them, and I'm so happy that he's in the collection. Um, I actually pre-ordered and then canceled this figure because I was going to get out of the 1-6 scale game. But I was like, no. <laughs> I re-pre-ordered him because I was like, I, I, I need this figure. And I'm so glad he's here. I got the Lon Chaney um, Phantom of the Opera figure pre-ordered. Pretty excited for London After Midnight as well. We've got our Sideshow Collectibles. Freddy Krueger here. 
Um, this is a custom head sculpt that I got, I believe, from South America. Wish I could really just... It's a really good head sculpt, and it's a lot better, in my opinion, than the one that came on the Sideshow figure. This one gives me original Nightmare on Elm Street vibes. I know that the shirt is not accurate because the sleeves are not just plain red, but you know what? We do what we can. I think this is a great 1-6 scale representation of Freddy Krueger here. Got another Sideshow collectible figure. I believe this is, well, I know it's Jason Voorhees, but I think it's from um, Friday the 13th Part 3. Great figure. See a little dust there? I haven't dusted all of these cases yet, but some of them are. Um, Tar Man from Trick or Treat Studios and the eventually released display base that comes separately, of course. But hey, I mean, I suppose at least we got it. Uh, the Tar Man figure does kind of leave a little bit to be desired. So to have the display base, it does kind of add to the vibe. You know what I mean? It does give him a little bit more presence. And then I'm starting to slowly build out my media collection. I'm a really big fan of Batman. Um, I think Batman and Wolverine are my two favorite comic heroes. And it's just kind of always been like that. So I really loved the Nolan trilogy. I'm a big fan of the Burton films as well. I don't hate the, the Ben Affleck Batman either. I, I really wish that I had the nightmare scene um, Batman because I think that is one of my favorite, if not my favorite versions of Batman ever. It's just so different and unique and I'd love to have that in the collection. I'm just not sure I want to dish out the money to, because it's in a two pack, right? It's in a two pack still from Hot Toys with the black suit Superman. But anyways, we're talking about Catwoman here, Selena Kyle from the Nolan films. This is from The Dark Knight Rises. Um, I'm a little late getting on the train, so I don't have Bane. I don't have the Scarecrow from, you know, Killian Murphy's performance there. I don't have Liam Neeson as Ra's al Ghul. Kind of kicking myself a little bit, but you can only do so much, and it's a process. It's always a process when you're collecting, because you're collecting, you can't there's only so much you can do and there's only there's only so much money in a certain time frame that you can put towards a collection otherwise you get dangerously close to it being unhealthy and unsustainable but I do have um, the Dark Knight double figure pack that comes with like the the armory backdrop or whatever pre-ordered from Hot Toys you get the Dark Knight Batman suit figure and you get a regular um, you get a regular Bruce Wayne figure uh, with Christian Bale's likeness it's like a two pack it's really cool and I'm probably in the smaller community of people who actually prefer um, uh, the bat suit in the Dark Knight over the Batman Begins suit. And I understand why people love the Batman Begins suit. I do, I really like it too. But if I had to choose, I would go with the Dark Knight. So we got Selena Kyle chilling here until we get some more figures in. Then when I got out of the 1-6 one six, uh, one six scale figure game for a bit, I was like, I need to scratch that itch somehow. So we went to the NECA uh, one-tenth or eight-inch retro line great figures. This is the one that got me collecting the retro figures. If I wanted one more Freddy Krueger in my collection, um, I don't really need any of the other iterations from him, from the other films, but I would definitely like this iteration from New Nightmare in the 1-6 scale collection. That would be awesome. But NECA's done a really great job of giving us some figures and some characters that have not been made in like any scale you know got Ghostface back here would be wonderful if Sideshow restocked them so I could get him in the 1-6 scale which I, I don't understand why they haven't considering it's been sold out for a while they restocked the Freddy Krueger 
I'm pretty sure they restocked, you know, the Jason and the Michael Myers. So I don't know what's going on there. But we got the Miner from Bloody Valentine. We've got Herbert West, Dr. Herbert West. I think Infinite Studios, uh, I think that's the company that did these. They just got the license for Reanimator, so I'm super pumped. I think they're gonna do this in the one six scale. This right here, I don't care what scale you collect. This is the be best likeness to Tony Todd and the best um, version so far, I think in any scale to Candyman uh, is this NECA retro figure. You get two different head sculpts here so you, you can go with like the bees um, exposed rib cage chest plate and head sculpt if you want great figure great fur coat coming down here i got nada i got the ghouls pretty pumped um i was pretty happy with my mondo mcready so i pre-ordered the Nada figure that's going to be coming out from Mondo as well. My only, my only thing is, um, you know what? I, I forgot. I forgot what my thing is. Oh, I didn't get the timed release because I didn't think the offerings were that enticing. But if Mondo really wanted to, make some ghouls to go with this guy. Make some ghouls. That can't be too hard. So at the very least, we could get the ghouls. Be awesome to get this this figure as well, this character. I think he was an exclusive. He was an exclusive um, for Scream Factory, I believe. Um, another exclusive here. There we go. We got that signed coaster there. So these figures down here, plus our homie up here, I think this is Dr. Chalice uh, from Season of the Witch, the third Halloween film. And then we will complete the cases here, the Detoffs or whatever, with this exclusive Burnt Chucky from Scream Factory. We've got our Halloween figures, our Laurie Strode, um, some Jaws figures. Would really love to get any of these guys in the one six scale. I'm, I'm completely like, just floored that we do not have a one six scale Chucky yet. I just don't get it. I really don't. Captain Blake, Stevie Wayne. She was a Scream Factory exclusive as well. And then we'll conclude with what's up top here. Got the Chucky still in his box there from the NECA retro line. We've got some great retro figures on their card backs. Uh, these are from Fright Rags. And I thought these would be cool to go on top, so I got those. This is the bloody version. Michael Myers, Linda. Got Annie, Sheriff Brackett, very cool. We'll come back to that. More NECA retro, the Thanksgiving John Carver. And then these retro card backs are from Trick or Treat Studios. Some nice, um, I guess, uh, the horror movies that haven't received their flowers as much as, I guess, some mainstays like Halloween. So we got Children of the Corn, Candy Corn, in one of the newer, I guess, cult classics, Haunt. Great figure line. It's crazy to me that I think it's been like two years since these came out and they have, Trick or Treat Studios has so many interesting scales that they're working at. They're doing one six scales, they're doing five inch figures, they're doing three and three four scale figures, they're doing, I just, and I have no idea why they haven't like continued the card back retro style figures like this. I just, I don't get it. But anyways, these were a FOMO buy because they've been out of stock for so long. I got the large scale NECA Ninja Turtles here from the 90s film. Had to have those. They're eventually gonna come out of the boxes when I have like a case that can accommodate them. 
beautiful figures. And all right, 35 minutes just about. Um, that's my collection and me rattling off about them. And I mean, what is a collection if not a bunch of different things that say something about the collector? You know what I mean? Like we collect what we love, we look at them, right? And they, they make us feel a certain way. I've loved Star Wars for such a long time, such a long time. And I collected like all, <laughs> like all of the Kenner uh, slash Hasbro figures in the 90s. I had like a giant box with all those figures in. Even some of the exclusive ones that you could only get through, at the time anyways, um, the, the Star Wars Insider. And then my love for like horror movies, you know. And then, you know, just my love for cinema in general, like movies that like gave me goosebumps and really made me feel. But anyways, all right, enough of this. Thank you all for watching and putting up with my not so articulate description of my collection here. And uh, yeah, have a great afternoon or morning or night. Take care. Bye.